touch is never enough I'm turning you up to get down, down Show me a piece of your heart, a piece of your love I'm calling you up to get down, down, down The way that we touch is never enough I'm turning you up to get down what? Sorry, just got to What if it's the James Hype Rings? James Hype Rings. Down, down, down. down. Tonight, but first up, we've got some games for y'all that's gonna be a bit of fun. So, uh, first up, we've got a game for you. What's this game called, Jai? This game is called The Price Is Right. Who knows what the price is right is? We've sort of we've sort of made it our own a little bit. It's gonna consist of three rounds. So for the first round, can I get two volunteers, a boy and a girl? Boy and a girl. Yes. Come on down, come on down, come on down, come on down. Uh, uh, names, please. Uh, Bowen. Give it up for Bowen. Bowen. Catherine. Give it up for Catherine. All right, one more thing, one more thing. What church are you guys from? One Hope, yes. Yeah. One Hope, One Hope. Any One Hope people? Obviously not, obviously not. Okay, 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 okay. All right, all right, all right, all right. We're gonna get into this game. So, the rules are, we have got two items to show to you guys for the first round. We have got, let's get it out, let's get it out here, let's get it out here. It's under this cover. All right, we've John. Got, what is that? So we've got some uh, tip top nine grain pumpkin seed bread. Some yeah. bread. Can we get the camera on that? Can we got the camera on that. We want a bread? camera on this. Bread? This is this is valuable stuff right here. We've also got tomato sauce. Now the aim is one of you guys is going to guess which one is more expensive. Paper scissors are off to see who goes first. Who gets the guess? Uh, oh, it is. Which All one right. do you believe is going to be more expensive out of this? We've got nine grain bread. It's He's healthy. Pick the nine healthy. grain bread. Nine different. Oh, what about this one, though? What about this one? This has got reduced salt and sugar. That's healthy, isn't it? Okay. All right. If you want to have a look at the screen, this is what we've got. For anyone who's playing at home, Bowen, you choose the bread, yeah? So. Oh. oh. What do you oh, want to pick? Oh. Five, four, all right. All right Take the bread right, and go right. stand over Let's there. Let's see what right, we've got here. Stand in front of the camera. Drum roll, please. Let's go. Count down, count down. Oh, the bread takes it home. So the rule is, Bowen gets to keep both of them. I'm sorry. On your bike. Congratulations, bro. You get to make some tomato sauce sandwiches. Head down, head down. Can I please get two girls? Two girls. Oh, 
Joss, or choose the other one. All right, all right, all right. Jossie, right. take it from here. Names, please, before we begin. I'm Megan. Give it up for Megan. Megan. I'm Ronnie. And Vani. Vani. Nice to meet all you, guys. Dry. What's on the menu? The next round on the menu is we've got some M and M's share pack. Ooh, we've got some M and M's. And although it's not April yet, we've got some Easter eggs. I uh, don't know why they're in the supermarket at the moment. Easter eggs, it's not Easter yet, but we can now pretend. All right, girls, do you remember the rules from the last round? Do you need us to tell you again? Uh, Paper, scissors, rock. The going first. Gets to see, gets to think. Who, which one is it? Hey. Which right. one do you think is more expensive? This one is bigger. This one is a value pack. Which one do you think is more expensive? Take your time here, take your time. You don't want to rush this decision. You get both of them if you win. Pick the M&M's, all right, just pick the M&M's. Here Drop we go. Three. Here we go. Oh, oh the M&M's have one. Bad luck, bad luck, bad luck. Good work, girls. Come here it is. Alrighty, can we please have two boys to raise their hands? Right. Please welcome your contestants to the stage. Here we go. Here we go. We have Elijah. Elijah, give it up, for Elijah. And Elvis. And we have Albus. Give it up, Albus. All right. Are we ready? This is the grand, Wait, grand, is prizes. The grand prize. This if you grand win, prize. you get both. The first thing we have here, you can't see it. It's a stamp collection. A stamp collection, all right? That's pretty valuable, Dry. A little bit more. Someone might actually want this one. You boys better pick wisely. You boys better pick wisely here. Would you like to take the honours, mate? Which What's one is picking? more valuable? Wait, 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 wait. We've got a stamp collection. Hold on, hold on. Take, take us through your thought process here. Take us through your thought process. I mean, toilet paper is like the thing that you need, but stamps can be pretty expensive. This one also, if you look on here, it's been marked down from a million dollars. Crowd decision, crowd decision. Toilet paper? With the toilet paper. I mean, you have to, don't you? All right, let's count down. We're counting down for five, five, four, three, two, one. Oh! oh. <laughs> so <all> my... <laughs> Testants, give Good it up for your contestants. Good work. Great job. Oh, sorry, Elijah, you're going to give me stamps as well, bro. Going to give me the stamps. It's only fair. You want the stamps or not? Give it up for our contestants! All right, all right, all right. Take the music down for this one. Take the music down for this one. All right, can anyone tell me what the sensation of the internet has been over the past however many months? I don't know what anyone said, but TikTok has taken over. Am I right? I'm going to ask my best friend, one of my main... One of my main men, Jacob Robottom, where is he? Come on, oh, Jacob. Say, Jacob. Give it up Jacob. for Jacob Robottom. And he's got the... This man... This man is a TikTok fanatic and he's very nervous, as you can see. He's got his bread here. How are you feeling, mate? Jacob, how are you feeling? 
not nervous, uh, a little unprepared. Um, this is like the Mr Miyagi of TikTok, right? So, are you ready? Are you ready? So, what we're going to do tonight is we're going to do some TikTok battles. We might not... Jacob, Jacob. This man is like the Mr Miyagi. Mr Miyagi, have you seen Karate Kid? Mr Miyagi of TikToks. Jacob, are you ready, bro? Are you ready? What are you doing with your bread? Hey, hey, put the put bread away. Down. Put the bread away. Show us the renegade. The renegade. Show us. Oh, are we ready upstairs with the video? See who can do this. Can we get some contestants up here, Joss? Can we get some contestants? Two All people. Right. Need to raise some hands here. Oh, yeah. We need a boy here. We need a boy here. Gabe, come up. Oh, hold on, hold on. How many boys? Gabe. for these guys to go for it. Maybe give us some space. Give us some space. Right. Come over here. Try. Again. One at a time. Oh, let's give a countdown, yeah? One at a time. Or both together. Both together. Both together. Both together. Jacob give is going to be you, our you're judge. You're going to have to judge this. Jacob's going to be our judge, Jacob's right? going to judge this. All right, all right, all right. Can we get a countdown in three, two, one, go. What do we think, Jacob? What do we think? What do we think? What do we think? Can we pick a different one or...? Oh, oh, I don't know. They're both subpar here from, in my books. Um, I don't think, actually, I don't think we got you guys' names. What was your names? It's, it's fine. Jasmine. It's fine. Jasmine and... What, what? Gabriel? Gabriel. I reckon it's Gabe. Jacob. I'm not gonna lie. Gabe. And I, Hang on, hang on. I think we need a third vote from the crowd. I think we need a third vote, a second vote, second vote from the crowd. Who thought that Jasmine won? Who thought that Gabe won? Oh, I think it's pretty clear. I think it's pretty clear. Well done, Gabe. Well done, Gabe. All right. We need another two people, John. We're going to go in. Go one more. One more time. We are going to do this. All right, I see hands pointing at you. What's your name? Tiara. All right, we've got Tiara. We've got Big Boy, yeah. And we've got... Alex. Alex, all right. We need to get you guys' names. Did we get your names already? Did you get their names? Take it away, guys. All right. Let's go. Crowd vote. Yeah. Crowd vote. We thought it was Alex. Yeah. We thought it was Tiara. That was 50 50, I reckon. Pretty close, pretty close. One more time, one more time. Let's go with Alex. Yeah, we're going to Alex. Good work, bro. Good work. 
Thanks, Tiara. Thanks, guys. All right, guys, so now you get the special privilege to listen to DJ Agile for our pre-show.
Welcome to the modern way Trying to be somebody I'm not But it's not what I want Tell me there's another way All of the lights are chasing now fade All the cheap thrills but only time wasted Tell me why society's plan should define who I am Surely there's a highway All of my best friends Come on! I sick of pretending If you're excited to be here tonight, I want to hear you make some noise. Man, what, what a crazy last 24 hours we've been living in. But you guys are here tonight, so make some noise for just being here tonight. Man, I'm telling you right now, we have got every brand of hand sanitizer that you can think of. Like, if you want to say hi to someone, you just kick them with your foot or elbow them or something. We're all about keeping space here. So, I'm so appreciative that everybody in the mosh pit has stayed away from each other. We love that. Hey, we're going to welcome you here. There's some youth ministries here I want to shout out because I believe they're in the building. If you're here from Planet Boom, where are you at? Where's the salvos at? Where's the salvos? What else we got? We got Warn Ponds Community. Where's Warn Ponds Community? Down here. Waterfront, YW. WY. Hey, I'm a little bit biased about what this one. Where's KYD? Down the front, love it. Church by the Bay. Church by the Bay. Church by the Bay down the back there. Hey, Momentum Youth, where's Momentum Youth? Cola, can you Cola come down? Hey, if I haven't mentioned your name, how about you make some noise? So good. Hey guys, what I want you to quickly do? Quickly, we do one thing. I want everybody to quickly turn around and wave to our friends on online. 
Everybody's online right now. Awesome. Welcome to everybody online. Gateway, Sierra Hill, One Hope. We love you guys. You're here with us. Get around them. Hey, we got some friends here tonight. All the way. This is crazy. This is crazy. I know this is crazy. We have some friends here. All the way here from Victory Church, Adelaide. Can we please make welcome Pastors Tony and Kath. They're going to come up soon. I'll tell you, do not, do not be fooled by how old or how not old he is. I'm telling you, he could out push up you. He could out bicep press you. The guy's a machine. So be ready for that. It is crazy. We also have our friends here from Mustard. You may have seen some people down there from Mustard. I want to show you guys a quick video. We're going to go to the quick video right now. My favourite thing about Mustard is that it's a really safe place that people who believe in God can come to and talk about the Bible and express their faith and ask each questions. I really like um, the sense of community. Just the sense of community. Everyone's like knows each other and um, we really come together as a group and we start to bond. to be able to relate to the kids that we work with and talk to them about God and faith and what they think about that. Hey, so cool. So must have come out here. They're a school organisation where you guys can, um, in your schools, actually form prayer units. Well, bro, you're gonna like, you're gonna like break his neck, man. It's like, he won't be able to walk for the rest of his life. Hey, quickly turn to the person next to you and say, I'm so pumped that you came tonight. Now hold up, hold up. Hold up, now I want you to turn, turn to the next person and say, it's all good bro, Jesus loves you too. Turn to the guy next to you, it's all good bro, Jesus loves you too. All right. Hey, I got one last request. Join United, one last request, and then I'm gonna hand over to the team. I'm so, this, the hype is so real right now, it's crazy. It's been ages. Hey, one request. When you go to the Dunny tonight, when you go to the loo, when you go to the toilet, when you drop the kids off at the pool, whatever it is that you need to do, wash your hands, wash your hands. All right, I'm gonna give it back to the team. I'm gonna give it back to the team. Awesome. Hey, we're going to continue to worship for a little while. If you feel comfortable in this space to raise your hands and close your eyes and just worship Jesus for who He is, please do that with us, okay? Otherwise, we're going to sing. Let's sing together.
don't deserve this kind of love So This kind of love is who you are It's a grace I can never write To be somebody you still want But so God, you love me as you 
Do you believe that tonight?
Who's believing for something special to take place tonight? I am. I got a, I got a confession. I love young people. I'm not a young person anymore, but I was a young person. And I've learned something that if you hang around young people, it's gonna keep you young. So you're keeping me young tonight, so thank you, thank you, thank you. I'll introduce myself and my wife in just a moment, but before we move back to our seats, Let's do something, can we? Can we just raise our hands to heaven? You know, the Bible says to raise our hands and the reason we do that is out of surrender. It's a vulnerable position because we can't defend ourselves. And what we're doing by raising our hands is saying, you know what, we don't need to defend ourselves because we have God in this place to do the defending for us, amen? And so we're going to pray and believe that God is going to meet with us and do what it is that only He can do in our lives, individually and collectively in this place. And so we invite your Holy Spirit into this place right here, right now. And we ask you for to touch every life, every woman, every man, every boy, every girl. We pray that we would have God encounters. We pray that you'd meet with believers and unbelievers, any skeptics, any cynics, any seekers of truth. We pray that you would meet with each and every one of us in Jesus' mighty name. Won't you come with hands raised to you? We surrender afresh and we say, won't you come, Jesus? Come, Jesus, and have your way. Come on, one more time. Let's lift our voice. So what I want you to do is you make your way back to your seats. Let's do a Corona safe high five. That's your elbows, okay? Come on. There we go. All right. There we go. Come on. Boom. Boom. So we're gonna sit down, but we're not gonna settle down. How does that sound? <laughs> sit down, but don't settle down. Sound good? Well, many of you would not know who I am. And so let me just do a quick introduction. My name is Tony Rainbow. <laughs> That's actually my last name. People say, did you, is that your name? I said, as if, as if I would make that up. I mean, really, if I had a choice of picking a last name, I promise you it would not be Rainbow. So it's Tony Rainbow. There you go. And it's great to be with you. We are good friends with the senior pastors that lead this local house, Pastors Rick and Leone Wright. And we just thank you so much for your friendship and the opportunity to be here with so many young people from so many churches in this wonderful city 
of Geelong. We come from Adelaide, Australia. Adelaide is that poor cousin to Melbourne. And so we're very jealous that you give to live in such a beautiful part of the world. And I did come with my beautiful wife over here. Her name is Kath. Everyone say, hi, Kath. And uh, this week, we've been together for 36 years. 36 years. I mean, that's a long time. And uh, a little bit of a backstory. I'm going to tell you where we met, because we were, we were 14 years of age when we started dating. And where we met is the kind of place that uh, you don't go to anymore, because there doesn't seem to be too many of these places around. And I would give you 10 guesses, and you'll probably never guess where we actually met. So I'm going to tell you, and we met... At roller skating. I skated up to her. Bonnie Tyler, Total Eclipse of the Heart was playing. And you don't even know what song that is. And I skated up with all my smoothest moves. And I said, how you doing? And in a couple skate, I was skating backwards. And I looked her in the eyes and said, will you go out with me? And she went, yeah. <laughs> and on the 17th of March this week, that marks 36 years ago that we started dating. And so she's just amazing and I love her dearly. And we've been married for 20, uh, over 28 years and we have three incredible kids. Our oldest daughter, her name is Jordan. She's 21 years of age. She just got married in Bali in January. So we now have a son-in-law as well. And then we have our son, Mitchell. Mitchell's 19, he's 20 next month. And he's in New Zealand at the moment doing a little bit of an internship at another church that we are in great relationship with. Uh, he's our one and only son, which makes him like Jesus. <laughs> His name, Mitchell, means like God. And he's here, there, and everywhere. So he's like the Holy Spirit. So Mitchell's just it in a bit. We love him dearly. And then we have our youngest daughter. Her name is Bailey, who we affectionately call BJ. And she's 13 years of age, going on 43. So, I mean, she is just growing up fast. And uh, they've uh, all been part of youth ministry. They've grown up in the church. They love God and they love young people and they love youth ministry. And they would love to be here tonight, but they are in different youth ministries. One's in New Zealand, like I said. The others are in Adelaide having a great time. And so on behalf of all of them, uh, welcome. They said, Dad, please say hi on behalf of them. So from Mitchell, Jordan and Bailey, hello. Like I said, it is, it is great to be here with you, and I really do have a passion for young people. And uh, I want to share something this, morning, uh, this evening that's really close to my heart. And uh, if you, if you want to have a title for my message or a title for my talk or thought tonight, it would simply be this, shame off you. Shame off you. Turn to the person next to you and say, shame off you. And I want to start my talk with telling you a little bit of a story of something that happened to me that changed my life. It was such a defining moment. And why I feel to share this particular moment is because I was of an age that fits this demographic. It was many, many years ago and I was 12 years of age. Yes, I can remember that far back. I'm like a thousand years old. And when I was 12 years of age, I'll never forget it, because I was uh, hanging out with two of my friends in the backyard, and my mum said, do you want to go to the shops with me? I've got to do some shopping, and you and your friends can go and do a little bit of shopping and just uh, looking at some of the shops, and, and we were into kind of toys and, and, and bikes and all those kinds of things. We said, yeah, we'd love to do that. 
And so we went to the major shopping center, which was just down the road from where we lived in a place called Elizabeth. Elizabeth was a rough area. So if you think about the roughest area that you've got in and around here, that, that's where Elizabeth was. Where is it? Okay, there, that's where we were. And so we get in the car and we drive to the Elizabeth Town Shopping Centre. There we were. Mum says, uh, I'm going to do some shopping. I'm going to leave you for one hour and I want to meet you back here. Now, we didn't have phones back then. I mean, shock. I mean, there was no phones. We didn't just, you know, we couldn't text or FaceTime or, or do any of that. We just, we just had to, you know, meet back where we were told to meet back. And so mum went off and, and we went off and uh, had a good uh, time looking at a few things. And uh, as, as you do when you're young boys, we didn't have a long attention span. Girls were a bit better than the boys, but we were kind of like, oh, now, now we've got to do something else. And uh, we went over to the candy bar to get some lollies, sweets, and uh, there was this big old long queue, and I thought, I, I, I'm really hungry, I want something to eat now. And I, I had this idea, why wait in a long line and pay for something when you can take it, not pay, and get it quicker? Now, I'm not advocating you do that, but that's what I did when I was 12 years old. And, and then I remember walking over to where the Hubba Bubba Bubble Gum was. And I walked over, had a look, looked around, walked back, had a look at the Hubba Bubba Bubble Gum and making sure that no one was watching me, I kind of as smoothly as you like just took the Hubba Bubba Bubble Gum put it into my pocket, walked out with my friends, and I felt pretty good about myself. And we walked away from that place, and uh, there I was celebrating this little victory of mine, and I, I, I started chewing on the bubble gum, celebrating this incredible thing that you know, just happened. And I was in a pretty good mood, and so I started sharing it with my friends. And just when I thought it was all over, I got a tap on the shoulder. I looked around, and there was this massive guy in a uniform. He says, young man, will you come with me? And I should have known something was wrong, but I was still in the euphoria of what I'd done. I said, sure, and I start walking with him. And then he sits me down in this little room and says, just wait here for a moment. And as I sat down, something dawned on me that this is not good. <laughs> and I started to recall my actions and I remembered that I was chewing on my gum. Another man comes in at that time and says, young man, what's your name? And I, and I struggled to get my name out because I was trying to swallow the gum. And I'm like... When I was your age, I was told that when you swallow bubble gum, it lives in your body for seven years. <laughs> That's not true. Because as a young man, I would watch and just make sure, and there it is, it's okay, it's all right, so. And he says, are your parents with you? And I had to say to him, yeah, yeah my mum's in the shopping center somewhere. And I'll never forget this 
coming over the PA system as they were searching for my mum. Mrs. Rainbow, can you come to Manchester? Mrs. Rainbow? And at that moment, it dawned on me, I'm in trouble. My mum came, eventually, asked what was going on. She found out that I'd been guilty of shoplifting and they made me go with my mum and head straight home. I was with my friends and they didn't see the severity of it. And we're in the car driving home and there I was parked at the lights and this armoured truck came and parked next to us. And I'm just in terror of what's gonna happen to me. And my friend, I'll never forget what he says, he says, hey, imagine raiding that thing. <laughs> Insensitive to say the least. We finally get home. My two friends disappear quickly and I hear one of them shout, I'll see you in about a year. And I thought, if you're lucky. And I'll never forget two things that my mum said to me that day. When my friends finally left, mum with tears in her eyes said, Tony, shame on you. And I gotta be honest, I felt the full weight of that shame. Anyone know what I'm on about? And as if that wasn't bad enough, then she said something else that terrified me. You wait till your father gets home. <laughs> and wait, I did. And I gotta be honest with you, at that moment, I did not want to see my dad ever again. I thought, if my dad doesn't come home, I'll be a very happy man. Which is really weird. Because only 24 hours earlier, I couldn't wait for my dad to get home. Because as was his custom in the summer months, when he would come home from work, we would get in the van and go down to the local paddocks where we would play cricket with some of our friends. And so 24 hours early, I couldn't wait for my dad to get home. And now here I am thinking, I hope I never see my dad again. Isn't it amazing that what I did changed who I wanted to see and be around? Well, I waited for a couple of hours and then I heard my dad's van pull up in the driveway. My heart was racing. My mouth was dry. My palms were sweaty. Dad comes in and he's a discerning man. He, he, he senses something's not quite right. And so he says, what, what, what's going on? What's up? And my mum, still visibly upset, looks at me and says, tell your father what you did. Now, I was struggling to get my words out because I, I was a mess. I was crying my eyes out. And not only was I crying my eyes out, I was clenching my butt cheeks. <laughs> the reason I was clenching my butt cheeks is because back in the day, before certain things changed, if you did something wrong, you usually got a good hiding. And, and, and so I, I was there crying. <laughs> Suck. <laughs> Clench. <laughs> and I managed to get these words out. I, 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 I took some chewy. I took some bubble gum. And Dad's like, what? <laughs> and I, I managed to get out. I said, I took some bubble gum. <laughs> Clench the cheeks. <laughs> and what my dad said next shocked me and changed my life forever and set me on a path which I'm so grateful for. 
with tears in my eyes, a clenched butt. Dad looks at me and said, Tony, you should have been quicker. And that day changed my life. Why? Because my dad showed me something. See, my dad was a Christian and he showed me what the love of God looked like. And as a result, I experienced three things that I believe God wants everyone in this room to experience. The first thing I experienced that day was his love. I'll never forget my dad looking at me straight after he said, you should have been quicker. He said, I love you. He says, Tony, look at me. He says, that may be what you have done, but that is not who you are. And he was able to separate what I had done from who I was. And I learned something about the unconditional love, that my dad was prepared to love me in spite of my shortcomings, in spite of my stupidity, in spite of my impatience. And this love that my dad showed me was a reflection of the love that God has for me and the love that God has for everyone in this room. You see, God's love for you is greater than what you do. I'll say that again. God's love for you is greater than that which you do. You see, there's a difference between guilt and shame. Guilt is a voice in a heart that says you've made a mistake. And it's God's way of getting our attention. It's God's way of arresting us. And you know, if you feel bad about doing something bad, that's good. But if you feel good about doing something bad, that's bad. And so it's actually good that we feel bad when we've done something wrong and unhelpful because it's God trying to get our attention. Guilt is when God's speaking to our heart But shame is the voice in your head that says you are a mistake. And I'm here to tell you categorically, you are not your mistakes. You are not what you have done. No matter how bad it is, no matter how controversial it is, you are not those things. My Bible tells me that you are awesome, You are amazing and you are beautiful. Some of you in this room, statistics tell me, have been told by people that are near and dear to you that you are a mistake, you weren't planned. I wish you'd never been born. And I'm here to tell you that is not God's heart or God's word over your life. You're not a mistake. You are awesome. You are loved by God. One of the most famous scriptures in the Bible is found in the book of John, chapter three, verse 16. It says, for God so loved the world, and that includes everyone here, that he sent his one and only son, that whosoever would believe in him would not perish, but have everlasting life. Man, I'll never forget that day. I sent something, not only of my natural dad's love, but it overflowed into my understanding of God's love for me. Another thing that I experienced, not only was his love, but also his forgiveness. I I looked at dad that day and I said, dad, I'm so sorry. Will you forgive me? And I'm expecting him to say, sure, but you're gonna have to do this, 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 and this. Do you know what he said? He said, done. It's done. You want forgiveness? 
Absolutely. It's done. And I felt a forgiveness that I'd never felt before. I didn't have to jump through hoops. I didn't have to do anything special or spectacular. I just had to come to him and say sorry. I'm so grateful that we have a God who made a way for us to be able to come to him and say sorry and receive forgiveness. When Jesus Christ hung upon the cross, he said these three words, it is finished. See, Jesus didn't die young. Jesus didn't die old. He died finished. He came and accomplished that which he set out to do. And that was to die for our sins that no matter what we have been involved in, forgiveness is available to all those that come to him and ask for that forgiveness. If you ask for forgiveness, it's there for you, ready to receive. I received forgiveness that day and I realised that forgiveness is available not only to me, but it's available to all of us. And there's nothing that you have done or can do that the blood of Jesus upon that cross doesn't cover once and for all. I experienced his love, his forgiveness, and also, thirdly, his freedom. You know, the moment I asked for forgiveness, I gotta be honest with you, I just felt clean. That shame that I'd felt only moments earlier was gone. That shame, that sense of worthlessness had been lifted. And, and this is the kind of freedom I believe God wants each and every one of us to live in and to experience on a regular, daily basis. And it's not just available to me, it's available to each and every one of us. And the freedom I'm talking about is a true freedom. I'm not talking about a freedom that comes by masking our pain with alcohol. I'm not talking about a freedom that uh, comes through masking our pain with drugs, sleeping around, doing all these other things. They are not the answer. God doesn't want to mask the pain. He wants to take your pain. God doesn't want to, you to mask your shame. He wants to take your shame. The shame that people have put on you, He wants to take off of you. People have an incredible way of putting things on people. Have you noticed that? We say some really unkind things and it can torment us for the rest of our lives unless we learn to get free from the shame and the things people put on us. I mentioned my son, Mitchell. He's almost 20 years of age. I love him dearly. But before he was born, we realised, based upon an ultrasound, that there was a deformity in his left hand. And the doctors said, we think you should abort because we don't know how this child is going to come out. And we chose not to abort. And I'm so glad we chose not to abort because he's a great kid. And there he was born and he, this cute little baby. But yeah, he, he has no fingers on his left hand. And I'll never forget one day he came home from kindergarten and he was a little bit upset. And I said, hey Mitch, what's the matter? And he said, oh, someone was asking me about my hand and someone was teasing me about my hand. And he was a little bit upset. He says, Dad, why was I born with no fingers on my hand? And I gotta be honest with you, I don't know. I don't know. And so I looked at Mitch and I said, Mitch, I don't know why you were born with no fingers on your left hand. But then I felt this God drop. I thought, I don't want him to live under this condemnation, this doubt. And I said, Mitch, but you know what? I also don't know why you were born with blonde hair. Hey, and Mitch, I, I don't know why you were born with blue eyes. And Mitch, another thing, I don't know why you are so incredibly handsome. I said, Mitch, I don't know if you know this or not, 
There's a lot of ugly kids out there and you ain't one of them. And I watched something lift off him that day. As a four-year-old, he's never asked me about his hand again. He just knows he's got blonde hair, blue eyes, and he's incredibly handsome. And there's a lot of ugly kids out there and he ain't one of them. <laughs> and I believe what I did for Mitch that day, God wants to do for you that, uh, this day. To take off some of the things you've been living under. Maybe for a day Maybe for a week, maybe for a month, maybe for a year. I don't know, but this I know. God loves you and doesn't want you to live that way. He wants to set you free. I believe if He was here today, He would say this. If Jesus Himself stood before you, He'd say, shame off of you. Shame not on you, but shame off you. You see, you may not have a relationship with your dad like I had with my dad. But this I know, you can have a relationship with our Father in heaven. You can have a relationship with God like the relationship I've been talking about. Because you see, Christianity in its purest, simplest form is a relationship. Some people complicate Christianity they make it about rules and regulations, what you can do, what you can't do, what you must do, what you mustn't do. I don't know about you, I'm tired of that. But in its purest, simplest form, Christianity is about a relationship. God loves us and wants to be in relationship with us and doesn't want us hiding away because of the things that we've done. Remember when I got caught shoplifting? The very man I wanted to see, my dad, I didn't want to see because of what I'd done. See, God's not hiding from us, but more often than not, we're hiding from Him. And God doesn't want us to hide away from Him. He wants to be in relationship with us because that's what Christianity is all about. But when we've got all this shame and all this blame and all this pain in our lives, it keeps us at a distance from God. And so He made a way possible for us to be able to come to Him. He left heaven, came to earth, showed us how to live, showed us how much He was in love with the world. So much so that He went on a cross and died for all the mistakes and all the sin and all the things that we've done wrong. And then rose again on the third day, proving He was who He said He was. And now He waits for a response from us. You see, for every relationship to work, it takes two. Would that be fair to say? I don't know if you've ever been in love with someone but they're not in love with you. It's kind of the end of the relationship, if you notice that. I remember in grade four, I had my very first crush in grade four with a young girl called Meredith Shearer. I'll never forget her name. And in term three, I got to sit next to her and I thought, this is my opportunity to make a move. And my attitude was, was whatever is mine is yours because I really like this girl and I wanted to get to know her. And so if she wanted paper, I gave her paper. If she wanted a pencil, I gave her a pencil. If she wanted a pen, I gave her a pen. If she wanted my ruler, I gave her my ruler. I gave her whatever she wanted. And with all of my giving and all of my sharing and all of me giving my best of myself, guess what? She never returned my love. In actual fact, she never returned my paper, pen, or pencils. Nothing. The girl gave me nothing. And so you can imagine the relationship was over before it started because she never responded. God loves us, but we'll never experience that love unless we respond to Him. Does that make sense? You're saying, I, I want a relationship with Jesus, but well, we've got to respond to what it is that He's already done in this place. I'm gonna ask you to do something right now. Can we just stand to our feet in this place? As the band come up, that'd be fantastic. I wonder if we can do something very quickly. Just all shut our eyes just for a moment. And let's just reflect upon what it is that we've heard said in this place because I believe God is present to speak to each and every one of us. He doesn't just love me. He doesn't just love pastors. 
He doesn't just love church goers. He loves the whole world. He loves you right where you're at. You say, oh, but Tony, you don't know what I've been doing. And you'd be right, but I don't need to know. He knows and He still loves you because you're not those things you've been doing. He loves you and He wants a relationship with you. And it's just a moment. I wanna create an opportunity for you to respond to this love. I'm gonna ask you to raise your hand in just a moment. And when you raise your hand, you're saying yes to an invitation to accept Christ into your life. You're saying yes to Him. You're not saying yes to me. You're not saying yes to this church. You're not saying yes to the youth group that you're a part of. You're saying yes to Jesus and starting a dynamic relationship with Him that will set you on a course. Much like I've been on for so many years and I have no regrets. This is the best decision a man, woman or child can ever make because it's a foundational one that will set you up for the rest of your lives. And all you gotta do is respond. All you gotta do is say yes to His love. And I believe you'll experience His love, His forgiveness, and His freedom. I'm believing tonight shame will be taken off of people. I'm believing eyes will be opened. I'm believing that there'll be new relationships in God started afresh. And so if you've never responded to Jesus Christ, you've never given your life over to Him, and know this to be true, every person gives their life to something or someone. We are designed to give our lives away. And if you don't give it to God, you'll give it to something else. Some people give it to drugs. Some people give it to alcohol. Some people give it to cars and possessions and sport and other things and relationships. But you were designed to give your life to Him because he's, He knows you better than you know yourself. So I'm gonna count to three. And if you've never received Jesus into your life, when I get to three, you raise your hand. And maybe there are some here who like the prodigal son have walked away from God. And you're saying in your heart, you know what? I, I, I wanna come back to God. You walked away from Him because you're disappointed. You walked away from Him because of your shame and some of the things that have happened to your life. You know what? It's never too late. We want you to turn around and come back to Him. So if you've never received Christ or like the prodigal son, you just wanna come back to Him and be reignited in a relationship with Him. I'm gonna count to three. We're gonna raise our hands. And we're gonna pray together. So if that is you in this place, let's get ready to respond. One, Jesus loves you so much. Two, He's waiting for a response from you. Come on, let's see those hands. Three, saying yes to Jesus. Yes to Him. God bless you. I see your hands. Yep, that's fantastic. Come on. Yep, that's fantastic. Over here at the back there, God bless you. Over to my right. Yep, I see that hand. That's amazing. Come on, any other? Saying yes to Jesus in this moment. We're saying yes to Him. We're saying yes. Yes, we're saying yes to His love. Yes to His forgiveness. And yes to the freedom that we have in Christ Jesus. This is amazing. So many hands. That's awesome. God bless you. God bless you. Any others? Are there any others? Are there any others? Come on. Let's put our hands together for those who are putting their hand up, accepting Christ. Yes. 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 So good. So good. So good. So good. You know, for everyone who's raised their hand, I want to lead you in a prayer. And I'd love it if you'd repeat this prayer after me. But I'd love it if we could all do it together. I'd love it if we, you know, could just stand with those who are responding and pray this prayer together. You ready to pray? Yeah, fantastic. Come on, let's hear you. Dear Jesus, I come to you tonight as a sinner in need of a Saviour. I ask you, Lord, to forgive me of all of my sins and accept me into my life right now. I ask you, Lord, to be my Saviour my Lord and friend, in Jesus' name. And everyone say, Amen. Come on, let's put our hands together, so good. For all of those that raise their hand, we would love it if you could make it over to the auditorium on my left, your right because you're gonna just uh, receive a a gift tonight. You're gonna receive some instruction uh, about the decision that you've made. So can you do that right now, just over here? That'd be fantastic. Come on, let's put our hands together for those who are responding. So good, come on. So good. So good, come on. Let's keep the round of applause going. Well done, guys. Well done, girls. So good, so good, so good, so good. Well done, well done, well done, well done, well done. Well done. Well done. Okay. So good, well done. Hey, for the rest of us, 
We're gonna close the night out with a song, but you know what? I think it'd be fantastic if we could just be prepared to respond because maybe there's some of you who've been sitting there. Yeah, yeah, you know Jesus, but you know what? Even, even as Christians, we allow things to stick. We allow things that people say to lodge in our hearts and, 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 and God doesn't want us to live with those things. And I think a great way to close out the night as we sing a song, if that's you and you're saying, you know what? I felt some of that shame. I felt some of that stuff sticking and I wanna be free from that tonight. You can respond right where you are, but I think it'd be powerful if we just step out of our seats. If that's you, and we're gonna actually just, we're just gonna lay it down. We're just gonna give that shame to Jesus because you weren't designed to carry it. And I think what a better atmosphere to do that as we're worshiping together. How's that sound? So if that's you, something of what you've heard, something that's been shared, you're saying, yeah, you know what? I wanna be free from that. I'm not gonna live under the condemnation of what people have said over me. I know that's not true. I know that I'm loved. I know that I'm beautiful. I know that I'm awesome in God. Let's just lay that down and just leave it here and leave this place free today. God bless you. Come on, let's sing. Let's respond. Thanks for your time today. I really appreciate it. Even when I don't feel it, you're working. You never stop, you never stop working. You never stop, you never stop working. Even when I don't see it, you're working. Even when I don't feel it, you're working. You never stop, you never stop working. You never stop, you never stop working. Cause even when I don't see it, you're working.
You know how we experience the victory? It's through surrender. We started the night with our hands raised to heaven. How about we finish the night in the same position, in surrender, because that's where the victory is found. Not my will, but His will be done. Can we do that in this place? Raise our hands one more time. Just surrender afresh. Let something of His love, let something of His joy, let something of His peace, let some of His hope, let some of the life, let some of that strength rise from within. Come on. a shout of praise to the God who fights our battles for us. Make 
this has been a powerful night. Like, I don't want to make no mistake here. This has been a powerful night. I'm going to tell you, the last 24 hours has been crazy. Young person, there was a chance that tonight's event potentially wasn't going to go ahead. But man, we serve a big God, eh? And lives have been shaken tonight. I made a big error today, and I'm going to confess something to you. I feel a little bit of shame, but God's grace, eh? We learned that shame off me. I decided to print off 50 response cards tonight. We ran out. I don't know if you guys kind of grasp that. Like youth ministries across Geelong right now. I'm, I'm, we had 50 response cards and we ran out. Come on. See, in the chaos, in the mess, in whatever's going on, we serve a God of grace. We serve a God of comfort. We serve a God of strength. We serve a God that can overcome anything in our lives, in our situations. And I think right now we need to do what is important, and that is to honour Pastor Tony Rainbow and the word that he spoke tonight. Old people can preach good, hey? If I look like him when I'm 51 years old, my gosh, my wife is going to be a lucky woman, I'll tell you that. Hey, thank you, Geelong United, for coming tonight. Tonight has been crazy. And... You know, after we surrender and we have a moment like this and, and we thank God for what He's done, we've got to praise Him and thank Him for every little moment. And I feel like for some reason, we just need to lift the energy a little bit just one more time tonight. And I know, bro, that you're all ready to get up and about. I feel like, I feel like I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna be spontaneous here. I'm gonna give you my mic because we're gonna let me tell you about him. You know what I'm saying? Oh, I'm just gonna be spontaneous here, bro. Oh, let's go. Come on, give him all the praise tonight. Come on, we're ready to give him all one more praise. I can't hear. Let me tell you about him. Jesus is his name. And I'm all about him. I live to bring him praise. He is the way and the truth and the life. God is three in one. Reigning undefeated. I got his overcome. Jesus, 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 Jesus. King of kings. Come on. Lord of There is no one like him. There is none at all.
Leone. Now, if she lets us sing one more song, we'll sing one more song. So we're going to look at Pastor Leone and say, please, one more song. fun tonight? Here's the important question. Go crazy if you go to church on Sunday. Young people, young people, it is important to be in church on Sunday. Get to church on Sunday, all right? Hey, uh, it's been so good having you guys here tonight. Now remember, what do you have to do when you drop a deuce? Wash your hands, all right? Make sure you elbow someone on the way out. Thanks for coming. Hey, May 15, next term, One Hope, Geelong United. May 15, be there.